Hello, this is David Ferguson with MLC CAD Systems, and I'm just going to take a couple minutes to talk about the benefits of arc filtering, especially when applied to some of the trichordial toolpaths in Mastercam. So I'm talking about things like 2D High Speed Dynamic Mill and OptiRough, our two big material removing toolpaths. So I'm uh, doing this on our intake flange part, and I've, I've got a real basic uh, pocketing routine written. Uh, for these three pockets using a, a 2D high-speed dynamic mill. And if I just kind of break that toolpath down for you um, so we can take a look at that really quick. Um, as far as the chains inside strategy, uh, I'm just machining those three inside areas uh, using a, a half-inch flat end mill. Um, step over is at 10%, uh, no stock to leave on the walls or floors, leaving the tool down. Very, very standard issue dynamic mill stuff. Uh, for my linking parameters, just going to the bottom of the part uh, through the material uh, with a profile entry here. And when I look at that toolpath, when I first generated it, it looks pretty reasonable. If I was to backplot that or look at that and verify, it would look pretty much like a, a pretty standard uh, dynamic mill toolpath. And there would be nothing that would indicate to me that I'm missing something here. And what I'm missing here is my ability to make this toolpath smaller and more efficient size-wise by taking advantage of the arc filter uh, for certain toolpaths in Mastercam. So to kind of show you what I'm talking about, we're gonna zoom in here on one of these pockets. We're actually gonna look at it in a, uh, in a strictly top view. And I'm gonna go ahead and pop over to my toolpaths manager and I'm gonna turn on uh, my advanced display. Well, my advanced display is already turned on, but I'm gonna go ahead and add the ability to see endpoints. And when I turn that on, things are going to get very colorful here. Uh, so when I turn on those endpoints, what I'm looking at here are effectively sort of node points. And, and sort of interpret what you're looking at here with this. If you can imagine that every sort of movement the tool makes from one of these purple dots to the next uh, is effectively a line of code. And you can see that there are a lot of purple dots here, which means the toolpath is taking a lot of code to cover what amounts to a small amount of area on the part. Now, the reason this is happening is that by default, the, the tricordial toolpaths, dynamic mill, OptiRough, uh, peel mill, uh, dynamic peel mill when it's set to dynamic mode, uh, by default do not use or do not have turned on the arc filter. Uh, these are off by default uh, in these toolpaths, and that's just something the way Mastercam just sort of does. So this is something I want to take advantage of because what this allows me to do is reduce the amount of linearization that I'm seeing here. And if I, if I really look into what this toolpath is doing, every move I'm making is effectively a linear motion. And, and to get around a corner using linear motions, uh, you know, like trying to back your car out of a tight spot or make a U-turn in a tight alley, uh, it's, it's like a 14-point turn to go around a corner. It, it just takes an unreasonable amount of code uh, to do something that is basically simple, just follow a simple arc. So I need to go ahead and use that arc filter to reduce the amount of linearization I have in this toolpath. That's going to do a couple of things for me. Uh, number one, it's going to make the, the, the overall size of the toolpath, just, just the, the, the raw data, uh, that this toolpath is uh, is taking uh, significantly less. And if I if I look over on my uh, sort of toolpath manager, and if I have my my toolpath uh, expanded, I can see that sort of raw data size. Now that's not a reflection of how big the NC file would be. That's just a raw toolpath data, what Mastercam likes to call your NCI data, just the raw size of that. And you can see that that is over a thousand K. Uh, for three small pockets. And I, I can do much better than that and, and get a toolpath that, that runs much smoother on the machine, that takes a lot less code, takes less time to get on the machine, and overall is just going to run much nicer. And we're going to kind of take this in stages uh, as far as sort of applying this filter so we kind of understand what it's doing. So the first thing I'm going to do to sort of filter this toolpath is I'm going to go ahead and allow that toolpath to create some arcs. Uh, specifically for this first one, I just want it to be allowed to get away uh, from that purely linear motion by allowing arcs uh, at its most basic level just in my flat XY plane using a G17. Um, so I'm just literally turning and checking one box here, turning on the arc filter, allowing arcs in X and Y. And I'm going to regenerate that toolpath, 
that alone will vastly reduce its size. Um, we've cut it almost in half. We're now about 570K and change. And you can see that on a lot of those motions, I've gotten rid of a lot of those node points. Now there's still way too many, but this is the filter applied at its most basic level. It gets rid of some of that linearization. Okay? So I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and sort of compound that idea by not only allowing arcs in a flat XY plane, but allowing arcs in my uh, XZ and my YZ plane, assuming my machine is okay with a G18 and a G19 output. Now that right now, because this is sort of a flat toolpath, isn't going to really reduce that size too much. It's gonna be roughly about the same size, right? About 570K and some change. Um, but out of habit and out of practice, you do tend to check those three boxes. Um, the other thing that I can do, and the, sort of the way this toolpath works with its micro lift motion, with its entry motion, uh, given the opportunity, I'm also gonna check the box to allow uh, what they call arc entry motion uh, or 3D arc entry motion. And that should take care of th things like that big profile entry as I'm ramping up or ramping down at the start and end of each pass, the, the way tricordial motion works. And that should again reduce that just a tiny bit, a little bit, five, you know, 560. So we pulled a little bit of code out of there. But what really makes the big difference between uh, getting this toolpath to be a, a less of a linearized sort of nightmare and, and you know, a lot happier, a lot, uh, a lot happier with more arc output, which is what I'm looking for, is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start playing with this bias here. And basically it boils down to, to this. Uh, cut tolerance tends to output as linear motion. Uh, what they call line arc tolerance, what we usually call arc tolerance, tends to output more towards arc output. So um, basically moving this bias slider without ever touching the overall tolerance of the toolpath, it's still at a thou, and even if I slide this all the way to the right, my overall cut tolerance is still plenty tight. For you and your machine, you, you sort of, you know, are gonna find the sweet spot for that, and um, I tend to program a lot for Haas's, and I tend to run my arc filter at about 25% uh, cut tolerance, 75% arc or line arc tolerance. And by moving that bias to basically require the toolpath to do the same thing, except do it with arcs, this is what's gonna happen to that toolpath. So this setting right here, you know, uh, again, total tolerance still at a thou, uh, my cut tolerance at about 20 to 25%, and then the remainder left over for arc tolerance and then allowing arcs everywhere this toolpath can do it, so which means in all three planes and on any entry or exit motion, I'm gonna go from where we were at the start, about 1,000K, and we're gonna get down eh, to just over 120K. And if you look at that toolpath now and look at the way it's outputting, and it, you know, again, the toolpath is still the same toolpath. It's still cutting the same pocket in more or less the same way uh, as far as area is concerned, but it's doing it now with a lot more of an arc output. So I have, I have taken that linear motion when and where I can, and I've sort of just chucked it in the bin. And I've replaced it with a much smoother, you know, sort of arc flowing motion. And, you know, thinking about the way the machine's gonna interpret this, you know, I'm gonna be able to run it a little bit faster, a little bit heavier, because my machine now has a little bit more time to breathe uh, between lines of code. Uh, I'm covering more distance with a single line of code than I was as a linearized toolpath. Um, I need to be doing this with my uh, dynamic toolpath. So tri anything tricordial, certainly. Uh, 2D high-speed dynamic mill, OptiRough are the two big ones that benefit massively from applying that filter pretty much that way I am. Um, and that this has been sort of the filter settings that I've used for years. Uh, for the roughing tool paths, under no circumstances would there ever be a call for me to, to ever use any of the smoothing settings. It's basically just biasing the output for a more arc-heavy output than it would be for a linearized output. So it's a smaller program, runs smoother, the machine's happier. Um, you know, there's, there's nothing really but benefits here. So just a little overview of what just a, a real focused application of the arc filter can gain for you as a programmer when you're using these tricordial toolpaths. And, and you should be using them because they are some of the best toolpaths currently in Mastercam. Um, but they can always be a little bit better. Now, one last thing, this is gonna be off by default. And every time I start a new program and wanna use one of those tricordial toolpaths, 
that is going to be off. So this is another opportunity in Mastercam to go ahead and save these as a default toolpath. So I can always come up and I can hit my save to defaults and go ahead and say, you know, this is a, a, a pocketing routine. I'll give it a, a, a bit of a custom name here. Um, you know, uh, uh, again, pocketing routine with the arc filter, you know, exactly kind of what I need. And then I can recall that, you know, every time I want to use this toolpath. So an absolute sort of must to use the filter, but also take advantage of the fact that I can make that a default value uh, with those new controls in 2024. So um, thank you so very much.